These are the Logitech Master 3S mice, and I felt pretty dumb after purchasing it. But not because these are bad, but because I wish I'd purchased these sooner. This must be how people felt after getting the wheel, or electricity, or even after the shake weight. In all seriousness though, this is a pretty impressive mouse that I love using and I would definitely recommend it and I'm happy to talk about it today. I'm Blex and I'm under no obligation to Logitech and I've purchased all of these mice you'll see today with my own money. I do however have some affiliate links down below if you'd like to support the channel and purchase some of these products. In case you've been living in a rock lately, the Master 3S is the top productivity mouse on the market. TDLR, it doesn't disappoint, it's a really impressive mouse. I love using it, I've been using it for over three years. It's succeeded by the old Master 3 mouse, and as you can see with mine, it's well-worn, and it's been through some long nights working on different projects over the years. It was time to upgrade to the Master 3S, and I liked it so much, I got two. They have upgraded colors, a new feel that's a little bit more rough, not rough, but it grips your hand a bit better, you still have the amazing ergonomic design to it. You have the two scroll wheels, the, the side thumb wheel, as well as the top mag speed wheel with the button to then increase the speed of the scroll. It's fantastic and definitely useful if you're scrolling large documents or spreadsheets, or for me, big huge blocks of code that I probably should have broken up. It has the traditional forward back buttons that are extremely effective, but what sets itself apart is these thumb gestures. You can't really see the button that well, but if you press down on the side wing and move your hand in certain directions, you can map different keys and functions to this. Its software pairing is unmatched in my opinion. Investing time in setting up the software, creating your keybinds has really saved me a bunch of time, and I know if you invest in it, it'd save you time as well. Now it's got up to 8,000 DPI on the sensor on the bottom, which is great, but you're probably not gonna be doing any gaming on this and you can get by with a lot less. I have used it for gaming, but only for casual cozy games. And I use my other Logitech mouse for more competitive gaming. Now lastly, I wanna cover some of the other quality of life things this has. You can remap to three different devices by clicking this bottom button here. It connects over Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless with a dedicated dongle. One of the greatest features, it sounds so stupid, but we have Apple here doing stupid every year. It has a front-facing USB-C charging port, so you can actually use the mouse as you're charging it. Crazy idea, but it just works. The battery life on this is tremendous. It'll last you many years, not years. It'll last you many months, but it's nice to know that when you do need to charge, you're not out of commission for that time. I want to quickly highlight the differences between these two mice. For the most part, they're very similar, but to me, the biggest difference is in the sound. They have a new quiet click technology with the new mouse, and let's get into a sound test to demonstrate that right now. You'll notice the sound on the new 3S is significantly quieter. I'm amazed by it and I really liked it. That's why I bought a second mouse, one for the office and one for at home. That way I don't have to worry about bringing it back and forth as much. It makes a big difference, particularly in my office setting, which is very hollow and cavernous. So those clicking noises that you previously heard would echo and travel and it got annoying after a while to me. And I'm sure my coworkers didn't appreciate it either. Now, who is this product for? This is marketed as the king of productivity mice. I think it's worthy of that title. If you're looking for something that is reprogrammable, has all the features, can do anything, that's this mouse. It has an ergonomic design as well. I feel very comfortable and never have personally felt any hand strain using it. So anyone looking for ergonomic design would also fall into the category of wanting to buy this. But where it really gets benefit from is people who are power users, who are coders, who are working in audio visual tools like Adobe Premiere or Photoshop or something along those lines. If you have a lot of hotkeys and macros, using this mouse and binding some of those actions to this mouse are great. Logitech's smart action software is incredible. I have a few shorts showing you some ideas and how to use that if you'd like to learn more about that. Who is this mouse not for? Anyone who's just doing casual web browsing, editing documents without a lot of hotkeys, you're not gonna get much benefit from it, and your $100 is better spent on wrist rests, maybe a better keyboard if you're doing a lot of writing. 
If you want to learn more about some keyboard options, I have some great videos on other Logitech products, as well as some gaming options as well. As most of my videos, I like to do a value comparison. Where does it sit? As I've mentioned before, it markets itself as the top productivity option. It commands a top of the market price. It's around $100 retail for this mouse, but can often be found on sale for, for less or bundled with a keyboard for less as well. So keep an eye on those. Its main competitors that I see are itself with some other more ergonomic options. There's also a travel version of this mouse. Although I do find this mouse to be perfectly capable of traveling as I am often taking it back and forth from the office and, and have it in a simple sleeve. And they also make hard cases you can find on Amazon as well as some soft cases included with the purchase of the mouse. There's other products though, like the Rappo MT760L. This is sort of an Amazon knockoff to me of this mouse, very similar design. Questionable, I have not used this. There's also the Keychron M6, which is a more reputable name, a company that has good keyboards, great build quality, and has known has been known to have software that can be productive and help you create macros, but I personally have not got a chance to use that and would love to give it a try one day. Now let's talk about changes for these mice. As you've seen, they've jumped in generations but kept mostly the same design. There's a reason for that. This mouse is great. People are very happy with it. There's not a lot to change with this mouse. What I would change though is try to focus on the price. They get away, Logitech gets away with commanding a large premium for their products because it works really well. It's a reputable brand and people are willing to pay that price. Some changes I would make would be creating finishes that don't fade as much. As you'll notice with my old 3S, or old three, I should say, I have significant fading on the left and right click, and you'll see my palm and thumb rubbed in and created some smudges on the side that are permanent. I'm starting to see a little bit of that with my 3S, and I would love for them to try to solve that in the future. The other thing they should focus on, to me, is creating a dongle slot within the actual body of this mouse. That's a very common feature you see in other Logitech mice, but it's missing and absent from this product. I love to carry my dongle around, even if I'm not using it. That way in the future, I don't have to worry about trying to find it if I were to need it. Overall, this is a fantastic mouse and you will not be disappointed with this purchase if you can utilize its different features. You need to invest time setting up macros and keybinds in order to fully benefit from this mouse. But to me, as I mentioned before, it would be my first choice upgrading my peripherals if I had a budget for it. Now let's jump into the leaderboard section. Okay, we're in everyone's favorite part of the video. Again, this is Blex's mouse tier list. This is the first mouse I've reviewed for 2025. We're gonna be starting a new list. As usual, we have three categories categories, gaming, solo productivity, and office slash travel. We have different attributes for each of these. Value is one of the most important. And then we have additional attributes that you can find on the screen that will highlight the different sections. So for gaming, you want accuracy and speed. For productivity, you want ergonomics, software, tracking, feel, other attributes. They vary based on the category. We're obviously stacking the deck here with the first mouse of the year, which is the MX Master 3S. One of my favorite mouse, my daily driver mouse. So this is gonna score probably pretty well. For gaming, I'm gonna have to put this in the C tier. I think it's actually a passable mouse for gaming, but there's a lot of great dedicated gaming mouse that's a lot cheaper. So for gaming itself, it's gonna have to get a C tier. That's not where this mouse competes. It competes in this productivity section. This is where it's a clear cut, unquestionable S tier for me. Value is hurt because it's expensive at $100. You can get it on sale but the ergonomics, the software are unmatched in my opinion. The features like the scroll wheel and the Bluetooth connectivity and being able to swap between devices, all fantastic. Easily the most productive mouse I've ever used in my entire life. For office and travel, this is actually going to be an A tier for me. The only thing holding it back is the lack of a dongle slot in its chassis. If it had that, it would be a clear cut A tier. All the attributes that make it great about the solo productivity carry over to the office travel productivity, but the lack of a dongle holder hurts it. That's it for Blex's tier list. Appreciate you guys watching. If you guys want more tech reviews, please stay tuned for more and like and subscribe. Peace. Mice. Mouse. Mice? Mouse?